Welcome everybody, my name is Mark Klaus, I'm with uh, VMware, and I'm also here with um, Dave Wilson, uh, I think he just may have stepped out, <laughs> but uh, Dave will be back in a second, and uh, Dave is actually one of the architects behind Beeson Operations, and I'm very happy to have him here because it's kind of hard to always get the engineers out of the offices and, and go out in the field, but uh, they do have uh, a wealth of knowledge that they share, uh, and can share, and today what we want to do is um, give you guys um, an overview of Visa operations. Before today, before us did today's keynote, how many here have heard or seen Visa operations before? A couple. And uh, how many actually have been running in the environment? Maybe two or three, four maybe. Um, for those of you who didn't, for, for, for the news, who didn't notice the, the announcements, um, Visa operations is a new solution from VMware uh, that's focused on automating infrastructure operations management. <coughs> It's basically the next step from the vSphere of the vCenter management server, then look at um, troubleshooting, performance problems, uh, configuration management, and change management as well as capacity management to really bring all, all the systems together. And what I'd like to do here is in the beginning just give you a quick overview of where we're coming from, why are we building this product, what's the, the goal of this, but then very quickly um, switch over to uh, David and he's going to give us a, a live demonstration of they explain to you what does it do, how does it work, how do I interpret the data that I'm seeing with uh, these operations, and how do I use it from a day to day type of operation standpoint. And uh, I don't want to talk about the journey to the cloud. I think you all have seen this before. You know, uh, you've done this path uh, quite well. But what we've noticed is uh, roughly at the, the second stage, when customers are starting to deploy business critical applications on, on, on vSphere, that's when the uh, the, the focus on performance, capacity, configuration management becomes very important because now the game has changed and when users call you up and uh, complain about performance problems, they oftentimes point to the VI app uh, because it's always the infrastructure, right? Uh, and then it's very hard to actually figure out where is the root cause of uh, performance problems in the first place. Is it with the application or is it with the infrastructure? And so with vCenter and uh, ESX Top, I think there are some good tools in place already that pick up a lot of the data, but it's kind of hard to correlate the data across all the different sub silos of technology. Um, you know, when uh, application slows down, it could be because uh, there's contention on the storage head or the database might be doing something that is causing the latency on, on the application. So being able to have deeper visibility into what's going on in the infrastructure, but then correlate uh, data across different technologies and titles is something that is becoming very important. And so as, as you move to this, you know, dynamic dynamic virtual infrastructure, what we're noticing is that really the traditional disciplines of performance, capacity, configuration management, it's, it doesn't give you the complete picture. You need something that takes a more integrated, holistic approach that focuses on uh, taking data that you're already collecting about the environment with monitoring tools, but actually analyzes this data and allows it to actively, proactively manage data. <coughs> The main goal here is zero incident. Uh, we want to be able to uh, intercept building performance problems before they impact the end user. That's the main goal here. And one of the things that we can do here is provide better analytics uh, so you can make sense of all the data you collect for the day. There's no shortage of data that we're collecting. Everybody has uh, some monitoring tools already. If you have just vCenter, if there's a lot of data already available to you, but the key point is to filter out all the false alarms, all the false alerts, but then focus on those things that really are important uh, to focus on. And also filter out what's an effect or the symptom of a problem. So what we're trying to do is, as we move to shared infrastructure, the performance, configuration, capacity management disciplines need to come together, and this founds, uh, it forms a foundation for um, you know, beast operations. And beast operations, as I mentioned earlier, is our new operations management suite that's focused on managing the performance Mass configuration of your vSphere environment. There's three key uh, tenets uh, to vSphere operations that are sort of different, that make it different from other solutions out there. And the main difference is around analytics. Analytics that look at not just static thresholds to figure out when an alert should be uh, sent to the to administrator, but that learns the behavior over time. We actually look at the data that you're collecting today and have analyzed it over um, different periods of time and then build dynamic thresholds around the typical pattern of deviation of, of data that you're looking at. And that allows us to 
uh, to actually see when things start to change from a null behavior. So we're looking at the current workload, we're looking at health, we're looking at capacity, and sort of the key indicators uh, of the building performance problem. So analytics is very important. It's something that really is differentiating our recent operations from you know, monitoring tools that just collect the data and maybe send you alerts uh, with a static threshold. But the second aspect here is around visualization. I think all of you are experts using vCenter and you're used to some of the, the tree and folder views that we have at vCenter. But oftentimes people have been asking for a simple management report, something that is really easy to see where I don't have to spend a lot of time clicking around at vCenter and figuring out what are all the different metrics that we're collecting around attention, demand, utilization, entitlement, and what does it really mean. So we want to simplify all the data we're collecting in uh, PC tools and dashboards that can be customized for different users as well. So you may have a dashboard that is targeted at you know, somebody who's using vCenter from an admin perspective, but maybe you don't want to build dashboards that you can publish as a web page to an operations team or an application team uh, that we also work with where they can go and check when they're experiencing a problem is it you know, on the infrastructure side or is it perhaps with uh, their applications. So being able to build custom dashboards, being able to explore and visualize the data in different ways is one of the, the other key focus areas for us here with uh, these operations. The third aspect here is all about integration. Um, having an analytics engine that can learn the behavior of the environment is actually not enough. You also need to be able to make sense of all the data we collect. And so in parallel to uh, the development of this product, we also have worked over, for over a couple of years on what we call the vSphere Health Model. And the vSphere Health Model um, is not available anywhere else. It's a bunch of algorithms and models that basically uh, describe what a healthy vSphere environment should look like based on some of the, the key uh, performance indicators we're collecting about networking, memory, disk, uh, CPU, and storage, and so forth. And we collect like 250 metrics from every single object in the vCenter of VMs, of course, or clusters, uh, ESX hosts. And the vSphere Health Model uh, brings all the, these metrics together in because it knows how the, what the relationship means between those metrics and makes sense of it. Then we integrate that with uh, capacity and change events. So we can actually see, what as SLAs change over time, what are the changes that occurred in the past uh, that might be causing the performance degradation. Oftentimes, uh, on an infrastructure, with an infrastructure problem, we can trace it back to the configuration change on the VM. Somebody had changed a limit or imposed a reservation on the VM and then five minutes later, the SLA went down. Uh, going forward, uh, we'll actually be able to overlay application changes as well. Somebody installed an application or a patch or modified the register entry or do something else to the application running inside the VM, and then as a result of that, the performance of uh, the change as well. Um, we will be able to, we have this already uh, in some of those uh, capabilities that we offer as part of these operations. We have the ability to roll back, remediate, against the uh, immediate uh, violations of SLAs, uh, but then we can also give you an impact analysis through dependency um, uh, uh, discovery, what it would take to make a change more proactive in the environment, what are the other components you should look at that might be impacted by those changes. Uh, we can't un-reboot the system, but at least we can roll back and, and uh, revert to a previous configuration state of uh, registry or uh, applications and patches that are installed on the system. So that's available today. And what it, what it means, though, from a, from a, from a penitent standpoint is, like the, the key takeaway here is we really need to focus on visibility, being able to get better visibility into what's happening in the environment, uh, being able to proactive, become more proactive in the, the way we manage it. And that means two things. One means when there is a problem reported by a user, being able to more quickly identify the root cause of the problem, to pinpoint it, to remediate it, uh, but more importantly, to avoid these things from happening in the first place. And so this is again where the analytics come in because we can uh, detect anywhere from 15 minutes <coughs> to a couple hours in advance as the uh, number of alerts or the noise levels increasing. We can then pinpoint where in the environment you want to pay attention to because the end users have not experienced the problem, but it's start about to start uh, changing uh, or impacting the end users. Right? So that's the idea behind proactive being able to uh, uh, diagnose and change, fix problems right away, but also to prevent these things from happening in the first place and really get to the point where uh, we, we have almost like zero incidents from, a, from an end standpoint. So that's kind of like where we're uh, going. Um, we'll do the background of these operations. 
Um, I'm not going to talk about this because really the, the main focus here is on, on, on Dave's presentation and his uh, demonstration of these operations. But I do want to uh, just give you kind of like an overview of how it all works, uh, what, what we're offering. Um, there are basically two editions, or three editions on FISA operations. There's two editions that are focused on the vSphere only environment. These are called advanced and uh, standard. Uh, they're basically targeted at the small environments, maybe starting at 25 VMs. Uh, if you have you know, a couple of VMs that you don't need performance management tools, like you can probably do it yourself. Um, but as you have 25, 30, 50, 100 VMs, that's when it really starts to become important to also look at the health of the workload of those VMs in the ESX environment. But then as you go up into large environments, we have some of uh, you uh, who uh, have thousands of VMs and physical servers where you're looking at something that uh, is looking at the entire environment, is targeted at heterogeneous systems. That's where enterprise, these operations enterprise um, comes into play. Um, enterprise is open. Uh, that means you can pull in data from your existing monitoring tools. Um, you know, if you have uh, ENT Smart, so if you have SiteScope, or if you have Tivoli, uh, we can basically pull in data uh, to, from your environment to then also include that in the analytics uh, to give you more comprehensive overview of what's happening in your um, in infrastructure. Now, um, I do want to remind you that you may have your own recent operations. You might be surprised, but we ran a promotion last year. Um, in fact, we even uh, went all, all the way to March 1st of this year. So when you, if you bought, if you know you bought these not these not server, I'm sorry. Vsphere, I should say Vsphere advanced and higher uh, uh, last, last fall or earlier this year, then uh, you may qualify for a 50 VM license of VM uh, recent operation standard. So um, some of you may have redeemed those codes already, but if you have received an email, definitely check with your purchasing guys uh, because we sent out those fulfilling emails uh, to the same email app alias that normally receives Vsphere licenses as well. So check with the person uh, to see if uh, you, you got the email from VMware. Uh, and if they did, if they deleted it, uh, you can call support, we'll give you the key. But you should redeem those licenses um, by the end of May, uh, so make sure that you get a uh, jump start with uh, uh, recent operations. 